gentlemen. <laughs> Morning. Uh, we're going to Glen Eaton today to try and get a couple of shots where the James Bond shot was. I did try and do a quick video this morning, but I ran out of battery, so I had to change batteries. Uh, I hope I'm finding you all well. It's dry at the minute, but I think it's going to be a wet day. Or at least it's going to be on and off. So, but yeah, I think it's about 20 minutes down the road. And we're going to head back towards Glinko. Do a couple of shots that we did yesterday. Just with... Obviously, no sunshine today. Mood, so a bit of mood, a bit of mood. mood. I wish we could see some fucking cows actually. We found a spot. <laughs> James, goodbye, James. Something parked in it, so we can't even get the car shot that we wanted. This is the Skyfall location here. From where we were at that bridge last night, this is probably a 10 minute drive. So it's easy enough to find. We just put it into Google. Uh, Whatever it is, Glen, Glen something or other. Just Google score for it, come up. Uh, I'm gonna go back to that bridge now. Get a couple of comp surface offices in there. So, it's quite nice here though. I mean, there's loads of camping spots down here. If we'd have known, probably could have come down here last night, but yeah. There you go. So, we've just arrived at Fort William. I'm gonna see if we can uh, change our train times to today instead of tomorrow just weather's not very good today so I'm just going to see if we can do that today so it's just hanging around for a day when really we don't need to so fingers crossed we can do but we'll see I'll check in in a minute so we managed to change our booking from tomorrow to today so that means we've got tomorrow free now to do whatever we need to do I think I'm probably going to head to Edinburgh tomorrow get some photos of the fourth bridge I'm not sure what Callum's doing yet so we'll stuff to wait and see but for now, I'm on a jack of all train. Nice chill day today. We're just about to come down into Mali. We're gonna have some fish and chips. I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> Fucking absolutely amazing. Going up the Beastow Bank, the sound, just incredible. So, and uh, obviously the bank by the viaduct completely ram full of photographers again the weather down there weren't as nice as it is up here I'm looking forward to having some chips and some fish down must admit nice hot meal maybe a beer and then we'll catch the train back I think we've got about an hour and a half just over an hour and a half to wander around Malik bit a bit so we've had our fish and chips we're just sitting down on the dock do not go to the chip shop next to the train station shit no, you I mean, ignoring the portion, ignoring the food, even the service was just, I don't know, rude, arrogant. This is probably the first person I've met the whole this whole trip who I thought a bit of an arrogant, miserable f shit. So, but the sun's out, so it's quite nice. Sitting on the dock of the bay. Yeah, that's the ferry we came in on on the Isle of Skye to Malig, Calmac. Thirteen pound that was. Absolutely still back in the train for twenty past two. Departure twenty to three. Back to Fort William. So look at this. Oh, tweet it a bit. So, on the road again now, <clears throat> just left Fort William. That Jacobard train ride, definitely something you should think about booking and doing. I mean, it was quiet enough for us because of obviously COVID. But I can imagine it being a bit of a nightmare when it's absolutely rammed. But even so, you know, the beginning or the end of the season, I think it's quite a good time to book. Nice way to see that area. I mean, when you're driving all the time for a start, obviously you don't pay so much attention to what's around you. But the railway takes a completely different line anyway to the road pretty much. And it's just, it is staggering. I'm actually on the way to Edinburgh now. It's roughly three hours from Fort William to Edinburgh. Got to photograph the fourth bridge. 
hopefully tonight the weather forecast looks quite good so I'm going to try and get a sunset at the fourth bridge the railway bridge that is if not I'll get up early morning do in the morning instead Callum's stopping somewhere near Glasgow not quite sure what his plans are tomorrow yet we might be meeting up tomorrow and then heading down south together or might end up just going our separate ways today do you know what I mean so just wait and see but yeah just thought I'd check in it's half four now so I should be in Edinburgh by half seven anyway it's been a week I'm dying for a shower if I'm honest if I'd have had a shower or if I could have a shower I might have been tempted to go and do the 500 but just the fact that there's nowhere open there's nowhere you can have a shower I just yeah I just need a proper a hot shower with some soap and a sponge and a towel a proper towel to dry myself off instead of washing in a river which is all right for a week Jacobot train ride by the way cost us roughly £45 for a return trip to Malik and that goes from Fort William that's twice a day that runs there are food and drinks on the train that they serve or you can wait until you get to Malik there's plenty of places to stop for fish and chips or there's also a co-op opposite the train station in Malik so if you don't want to go and buy anything from a restaurant you can pop to the co-op get yourself a meal deal there for three quid you got the docks there as well there's also which i didn't realize there's also a wildlife cruise you can do from malik and it fits into the time slot where the jacobite is resting at malik so you go off the train in Malik, go over, jump on the wildlife cruise, come back and then jump back on the Jacobite train to come back to Fort William. So it's a perfect little time filler. And that was only £13 for an adult I believe, which isn't bad at all. If I'd have known, I think I, I would have done that. It's not a game, it's a rich thing. take a photo off before I went home something I should have done last time I was here the fourth railway bridge look at that I'm gonna try and get down to the beach or the shore get a bit of a better composition so I might get down to the shore pretty spectacular from down here I'm gonna send the drone off in a minute I was gonna get a couple more shots from down here I think Maybe a couple further around. And then, uh, and then I think I'm gonna make my way back home, to be honest. Don't see the point hanging around for no reason. So, get a few more comps and I'm off. Oh, see you later. Alright, so I feel I've got a couple of comps down there, but the one I wanted. Be careful flying the drone, I think it's a slightly restricted area because of the airport, so stick to the guidelines, don't fly too high and all that crap. Top thing. I'm going to start heading home. Five hours, 28 minutes. Should go home about half two in the morning. I just don't see the point staying anywhere near here. It's only a five hour drive. I might as well just get it done with today. Go home late. I can spend the morning in bed. I'll stick you up on the uh, parcel shelf and probably tune in some point during my trip home. So I shall speak to you in a bit, if not in the morning. Because of the rain we had on the Isle of Skye, 
definitely had a bit of a problem with damp. You know, my waterproof, my jeans, my bedding was quite, seemed damp all the time. But I guess that's to be expected, really, with the weather that we had. So, but other than that, you know, well, just for it, the way it performed, everything, it's uh, spot on, really. It's perfect for what I need it for. It's big enough for me on my own. If, if I was going to take anybody with me, I'd have to have a bigger bed for sure. But for me on my own, it's absolutely perfect. There's enough space there to sleep comfortably without falling out. So I'll go over um, food and things I took with me tomorrow and show you what's under my bed, how that's laid out. So I'll have to take it all apart and put everything away anyway. So I'll show you that. I'll take all the bedding back in the house and then I'll have a clean van to show you. Good morning. So I drove back last night. Got back about half two. Uh, I was going to do a video as I pulled up to the house, but I was absolutely battered. Yeah, I'm going to start working my way through the van today. So I'll take you down with me. And uh, once I've cleared all my bedding out, I'll just show you my setup under the bed. I'm going to go through food as well, um, show you what I took and what's good to take. And if there's anything I wish I'd have took with me, there's a few things like just simple things that I forgot a few things that Callum remembered, and Callum forgot a few things I remembered, so it worked out pretty well. Washing up liquid, things like that. Callum remembered that, I didn't. So, and show you this. Oh, oh, have my coffee, and I'll uh, speak to you in a minute. Alright then, just a quick one. Uh, I'm just going to show you briefly what I kept under me bed. So, got socks, t-shirts and everything on these canvas boxes. And got a big camera lens there. Trousers, t-shirts, whatever. Dirty washing behind there, at the back. My dry foods, pasta, chocolate. These are really good. Flapjacks. Uh, pasta pots, anything like that is absolutely perfect. These things, because all you have to do is add hot water to them. You don't want anything that's going to take too much prepping. Uh, ball in a bag, top stuff. If you like to see milk, spare loo roll down there. Essential baby wipes, golden syrup sachets. This, this time, I actually made loads with rice. I had chicken and rice. I had Hollanders broth and rice. Rice and pasta is really good, bulking up your meals. Like I say, because I had the mini fridge this time, I managed to buy a fair bit of fresh meat. I mean, you can make it as luxurious of a meal or as simple as a meal as you want. It all depends on how you're feeling. But yeah, rice, pasta pots, anything like that, anything that's easy. Just got to heat it up or put a bit of hot water in there. It's perfect. And obviously don't forget salt, pepper, yep. olive oil, something like that. Stop it sticking to your pan. Non-stick pans. Absolutely brilliant. Because it's just so little effort to keep them clean. It's perfect. So that's the type of thing you want really. You don't want to be messing around scrubbing stuff. We wash most of our stuff in rivers and things that we found, so Nice and easy. So. Hollanders broth, beans, PM soup, oxtail soup, microfiber towel, shavers that I had to box, full of potato, antibacterial wipes. And then in there, obviously, makes sense to take some motor oil and some coolant with your cooker. Torch, spare flask, gas, cooker, kettle, pots, and I got toothpaste, knives and forks. I've got to take a towel with me. Not that it mattered because we couldn't have a shower anyway, but we did wash in the rivers and things, so I need a decent towel. Plus, some of the services were open, even though the showers weren't you know, washing a sink, things like that. Callum bought the washing up liquid and a tea towel 
and sponge which I completely forgot about so don't forget that so obviously you're gonna need to wash your stuff usually I'll just use my hands but it makes it off a bit easier another thing was if you're gonna be spending a few days in your van absolutely essential that everything you use your GoPro, your camera, your drone you've got 12 volt chargers for it all I haven't got a 12 volt charger for my laptop but I don't use it that much when I'm away so to bear in mind if you've got a drone and it's a DJI the 12 volt charger only charges the batteries it doesn't charge the remote controller so you'll have to figure out a way of charging that I'm not sure if it charges via USB but other than that I don't think there's anything else really, apart from getting out there and doing it, that I can recommend. Plenty of clothes. I'm going to go through a few clothes, especially in Scotland, because it's so wet. Decent waterproof trousers would have been nice to have had. My boots were great. Carry more. And then my, my Northridge waterproof jacket, what I got from Guard Doors. Absolutely brilliant. Really can't fault it. About the best waterproof I've had. The rain that we suffered and it kept me nice and dry inside. So easy to dry out. Put it in the van, put the heating on for five minutes and it's done. Two pairs of boots, trainers, and I recommend taking some wellies as well if you're going to be taking photos, uh, which I didn't do, which I should have done. So, camp chair, tripod, chopping board. Something I forgot last time, so I remember to take that this time. I did take a standing still grill with me to have feed on the fire, but we never had a fire. So, saw, bow saw, axe, cutting wood, which we didn't do. Fire extinguisher, that's about it really. I mean, a bit of common sense, you know what to take with you. You know what you'll need. Just use your brain, toothbrush, things like that. Maybe some reading material. Depends on how put off you are by the rain. Right, I'm going to put this stuff away. And then tell me about for a roll.